this very now controversial law. Senator Panfilo Lacson, who authored Republic Act 10973. Welcome to Hot Copy, Senator Lacson. Good morning. Thank you for coming to the show. All right. Why is this necessary, given that there are many agencies with quasi-judicial powers who already have the authority to subpoena? Why give it to the PNP and the CIDG? Well, it is necessary to capacitate the PNP CIDG in particular to complete a thorough investigation. Because, and, and besides, before, uh, this was already being enjoyed by the PCCIS. No, you were not born at the time yet. Okay. Uh, the Philippine Constabulary Criminal Investigation Service. For some reason, when Republic Act 6975, more commonly known as the PNP law, was enacted in 1990 you know, and uh, was implemented in 1991, January of 1991, uh, somehow the framers of, the, of that law uh, overlooked that provision. So it was omitted, it was deleted, and we're not, we're only restoring that provision, granting the uh, PNP CIDG now, no? uh, under 6975, it is known as the CIU, Criminal Investigation Unit, but it evolved into what is now known as the CIDG. Okay. okay, under what grounds can, let's say, the PNP chief issue a Sabina? Because today, if, uh, if you are not yet a suspect, you can only be invited, right? Yes. The PNP will say, we are inviting you to cooperate. Under what grounds can they issue this subpoena? Well, the subpoena must clearly state the nature and purpose of the subpoena. And in the case of subpoena dos estecum, uh, only relevant books, documents, and other things no, that are relevant to the investigation uh, should be included. So. When we enacted or we were, when we were deliberating, remember, I, I only authored and mm -hmm. sponsored this, but yeah. this is a product of a uh, deliberation yeah. among uh, the senators. Oh. You know. But on what grounds can the PNP issue it, for example? When they're conducting an investigation, a criminal investigation, and they need some witnesses, for example, mm -hmm. even uh, possible suspects, then they can issue the subpoena. So they can issue it to anyone, frankly? Not to anyone, but to a particular person uh, that they need to be present uh, during an investigation. Okay. And one of the safeguards that we instituted uh, is that we limited the uh, authority to only three persons, mm. uh, three officials, the chief of the Philippine National Police, the director of the CIDG, and his deputy director for administration. The reason being... Uh, what if the chief PNP and the director of CIDG are both uh, out of town or out of the country, then uh, uh, most probably or uh, in all on all occasions, the deputy for administration of the CIDG would be present because he will be the, uh, uh, the one uh, attending mm -hmm. to the office. But then what is lacking in the present law for the PNP and CIDG to conduct thorough investigations? Why do you think, do they need this power? Yes, because they can compel the witness or witnesses or the person that they are investigating for certain crimes to be present in their investigation. Okay. Whereas without the subpoena power, they cannot compel them. No, they can just invite them and, and if they and if, if the, the person, person declines, will heed, yeah, declines, then the PNP is helpless. So it is actually to capacitate or to enable the, the PNP to perform their investigative uh, duty. Okay, now, what if I get a subpoena mm -hmm. and I'm not a suspect yet and I refuse to attend? Let's say, how many subpoenas need to be issued before I am penalized of any kind by the PNP? Well, only one. If, uh, if you do not heed the subpoena, you do not attend, then the chief PNP or the director of CIDG or the deputy director for administration may go to the RTC and uh, file for indirect contempt. Okay. And it is uh, within the power of the court, the RTC judge, to to hear and then uh, give due course to citing that person uh, for indirect contempt. And then put you in jail for how long? It depends on the court. It is the decision of the judge uh, what to do with the person who refuses the, the subpoena or who refused the subpoena. One may wonder if this is safe given the environment we're in. 
there's a trust issue with mm -hmm. some policemen today when it comes to the war on drugs. So it's but right that you have human rights advocates really worry. Some said number one, yeah. it's subject it's 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 gonna be subjective, okay? It could be a shortcut, for example. Uh, when they want to search your home, their only option before was to apply for a search warrant. That's Does a different that still matter. Remain? Okay. Search oh. warrant is another thing. No? Subpoena yeah. and service of warrants of arrest are two different matters. Yes. No? Subpoena is just uh, a writ, no? uh, uh, summoning a person to appear before an investigator to give or he may even refuse to give his statement because the Bill of Rights is still in force and in effect. No? Let's not forget that. And the person is the right uh, not to give his statement in an investigation. He it's just right has to, to appear. In other words, appear. you have to, you need to appear with a lawyer. With a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, with a lawyer, huh? yes. that's a requirement a in the law. Yes, a statement taken by an investigator without the presence of counsel is invalid. It cannot be used mm -hmm. as evidence against anybody for that matter. So a lawyer must be present during the conduct of the investigation. Okay, but then under the new law, RA 10973, correct this, it says there that a subpoena from the PNP only has to contain a reasonable description of the books, that is correct. documents or things demanded, which may be relevant to an investigation. Yes. But unlike before, where you need a search warrant, no, a search warrant okay, is a different matter. A search warrant is applied... But then this one, you just have to describe, and then you can subpoena. Yes, to submit the documents in the case of a subpoena du sistecum. Mm -mm. But remember, the person but being subpoenaed... But is broad? No, but it should be relevant to the investigation being conducted. But who's to say what's relevant or not? That's what I mean. Well, it's the so court. Because the person being issued a subpoena may question it before the court. He can petition the court... Uh, to issue a, a temporary restraining order or even a certiorari to prevent uh, the person who issued the subpoena, meaning mm -hmm. the chief PNP or the director of CIDG, uh, to restrain him from issuing the subpoena or implement the subpoena. Then why go through all this? For example, I'll, I'll tell you, when the Senate issues a subpoena, mm -hmm. they can't go to the court and question the Senate subpoena. They have to appear, correct? Yes, yes, that is why correct. Why give powers to the PNP to issue a subpoena if, let's say, I'm issued one and I can go to the court and ask first the authority of the PNP? You yeah. get me? Yes, because that's part of, a, of an investigation. That's part of due process. And if the person... But doesn't that hinder the investigation instead of inviting the person to cooperate? There's no coercive uh, power in an inv invitation. Precisely, we give the PNP the power to subpoena to make them compel or to enable them to compel the person uh, being the subject of an investigation, whether as a witness or as a possible respondent, to appear, mm -mm. just to appear. Okay. And what? how do you protect the person, Sabine? For example, mm -hmm. does the law state you cannot put them overnight in jail? You cannot detain them? Let's say I was Sabine and I refuse to cooperate for some reason, but I'm not a suspect. Yeah. Huh? yeah. How does that protect my human rights? Yan ang tanong ko ngayon. If you don't want to attend, no, then you... No, let's say I attended, but I mean, not me. Mm -hmm. But then the person refuses to speak because... The, That's the, well within his rights. Okay, so I, that person can't be detained. Yes, he can always invoke his right and he cannot be detained because there are reglementary periods for certain offenses that must be followed. And this is uh, contained in the uh, revised penal code, no? Is that clear in the law that, that, that you can't clear. detain? They cannot be detained. Okay, what else? Go on. Unless you can only be detained if uh, you, you, you are arrested on the basis of warrantless arrest. Citizen's arrest meaning uh, you, 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 you were caught, caught committing in the a act, crime. Yeah, commit, yeah. about to commit, uh, has just committed, and actually committing. Yeah and that the person has personal knowledge that is conducting the arrest or effecting the arrest has personal knowledge that you have in fact committed that crime. Mm, okay, so in other words, you've put in that provision... And if you are a, an escapee, you know, you're uh, a fugitive, yeah. you escape from the national penitentiary, yeah. uh, then there's no need for a warrant of arrest. Okay, I'm reading from Chris Antonio's mm -hmm. um, observations from the Center of International Law or Center Law. So her second point is, frankly, it's intimidating, okay? 
giving the PNP and CIDG <laughs> powers is Sign intimidating. Of the times, Karen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. So, um, uh, she says that uh, also Attorney Olalia said when the PNP chief director issues it, people will tremble and there's no option to actually refuse it. Is that the intent of the law? No, the intent of the law is to just enable or capacitate the PNP CIDG and the PNP in general because uh, we included the chief PNP uh, as, an, as another authority to issue that subpoena because uh, not all investigations are being conducted by the PNP CIDG. Remember the regional uh, uh, directors, uh, the regional offices, the police regional offices are also conducting their own investigation. So they cannot, the regional director cannot just go to the director of CIDG because that's a special unit of the PNP. So they can go to the chief PNP and request for the issuance of a subpoena uh, that can be served uh, on a person that they need to investigate. Yeah. Now, th the reason, could it be, Senator, that the reason it was purposely removed in the 1987 Constitution is because it is open to abuse. Today, if you're a police officer and you go to someone's house and you want to ask questions, mm -hmm. a person can literally say, you know what, get a warrant, have a court yeah. order me. Yeah, but not anymore with this law. No, but he can seek redress, he can seek remedy from the courts. And there are available uh, RTCs uh, from whom uh, that person can, uh, can go to and question the subpoena. But then why would the court side with, let's say, a person being subpoenaed when you have a law that gives authority for the PNP to subpoena? Well, if the court finds that the subpoena issued is so arbitrary okay. and not even relevant, uh, to the investigation and it does not state the nature and purpose of the investigation, then the court may, uh, may just issue a temporary restraining order mm. so that the subpoena cannot be in effect anymore. I'll give you a situation, for mm -hmm. example, which was um, at one point in the Senate hearing, the PNP had said, you had asked, it was a case, uh, what made you think that uh, it was a minor, I can't remember the name right now, was a drug courier. Mm -hmm. And the PNP had said something strange, which was on Facebook. Remember well, that? That's not an evidence. That's the point. Yeah. So can they use that, for example, on social media, on Facebook? They, they will claim to get information against a person on Facebook. Can the PNP chief issue a subpoena? On a minor? No, or, or anybody, no. No, or, or anybody, anybody based on Facebook. No, I don't think so. No, you There should be... Uh, a sworn statement taken by the investigator implicating that person or mentioning the name of that person as a possible witness but before is, the PNP. But is that clear, Senator? Does it say in the law? Well, it says the nature and purpose of the investigation. Okay. Because if, the, if, that's not, if it doesn't fall under the, that scope, you know, the, the nature of the investigation, and it, doesn't, uh, it will not serve the purpose of, this, of that investigation, then the, the PNP is not authorized to issue the mm -hmm. subpoena. And it can be questioned precisely before any court. Mm -hmm. Aren't you putting too much trust in the hands of the PNP chief and the CIDD, uh, CIDG head, regardless whether it's Batoha, mm -hmm. I mean even those to come? Well, I, I would say it's more perception than reality, Karen, uh -oh. because as I said before, before the uh, mm -hmm. PNP law was passed, it's, it was already there, the subpoena powers uh, yeah. being enjoyed yeah. by, uh, by the C P PNP or the PCCIS uh, at the time. And remember, Karen, it is not only the PNP that is empowered to issue subpoenas, aside from the courts, uh -oh. no? the office of the ombudsman, yeah. the DOJ, the of course, these are uh -oh. uh, prosecutory bodies. Uh, no? yeah, yeah. But aside from them, the Bureau of Internal Revenue, the PIDEA, the Cybercrime Operation Center, no? uh, they are empowered to, or the, N and the NBI. They're, they have the powers to issue subpoena. Yeah. Now, an another point of center law was, doesn't this expose a person to a court case? Here you are. For example, yeah. if you refuse to appear. Yeah. Diba? What happens then? I can be charged, as you said, for indirect contempt and then put in jail. By the judge. Yes. Not by the PNP. Yeah. <clears throat> no. Yeah, that is correct. And, and you want that? In other words, doesn't that 
denies the right because of that's a person? legal order okay and if you do not heed a legal order then you are committing yeah. you're possibly committing a crime okay but then how do you have control senator of the human aspect of this i'll give you an example mm. as um the center law says an actual investigation here you are you refuse you defy answering questions but you're there yeah eminales ka yung pnp chief medyo i i'm not saying this present one you know what i mean can find loopholes or discretionary aspects in the law you use you, you defy questions you refuse to answer then they recommend That's the case. That's within his rights. He cannot be forced to uh, to give his statement, his sworn statement at that, if he doesn't want to, you know, by reason of uh, self-incrimination, he can refuse giving a statement. Even giving a statement without the presence of counsel is illegal. You cannot force a person to give a sworn statement, even no, in the okay. Senate. No? Okay. We but see to it that the, that the persons being questioned uh, especially when there's a possibility that he may incriminate himself. We ask him, yeah, but, do you have a lawyer? Yes, but then the Senate, given that its main objective is to craft laws, yes. would be very difficult, different, if you are, for example, in front of a police officer. So let's say, here I am, and I refuse. Yeah. I'll say, this is self-incriminating. The policeman in front of me will say, guilty ka eh. Tignan mo, guilty ka. Now, if there, there were no subpoena <laughs> powers, the policemen would have had to do their homework, really do hardcore investigation before having me there. But the subpoena powers makes it easy for them. For example, they can just say, ah, for example, yeah. no, there's a witness. We can't name the witness pointed to you. I'll ask, who is the witness? They'll say, we can't name it. The witness is confidential because you've given them subpoena powers to call, for example, someone like me. Then they don't have to do hardcore investigation of really finding evidence. Well, the subpoena is just for the purpose of present to be able to 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 make sure that the person will appear before that investigation. But he cannot be forced to give a statement before the investigator, much less without the pre, uh, mm -hmm. without the presence of a lawyer. Okay, another question. Does it give the PNP powers, for example, mm -hmm. if I'm the PNP yeah. chief, I wrote a subpoena, I give it to a police officer, pumunta ka sa bangay ni Karen Davila, dalin mo yung subpoena, yeah. kumatok ka, nandun ako. Nachamba nila, nandun ako. They will arrest you? No, because there's a date specified in the okay. subpoena. Uh -oh. they, you will just uh, acknowledge receipt of the subpoena. And if you are not uh, present, ah. if you're not in your residence, then any, uh, maybe the any, household yes. help, can uh -oh. just acknowledge receipt. So it cannot be that they have the subpoena and they'll say, "Come with me now." No, no, that's that cannot be that cannot be uh, done. No. And the subpoena are mostly mailed to okay. the uh, person uh, being summoned to appear. Uh -oh. Okay, uh, the center law also says, "May this lead? Is it possible to a warrantless arrest?" Okay, of course, Secretary Harry Roque said, "No, they cannot arrest yeah. you." But according to Attorney Olalia, considering the realities mm. of how, some, how abusive some policemen are... I'll give you a situation where a person who, uh, who has appeared before an investigator is arrested. Okay, no. go on. Okay, a person is uh, issued a subpoena. So he appears before an investigator. And uh, when they run a record check, the investigator or investigators uh, mm -hmm. find out that he has a pending warrant of arrest mm -hmm. or he is a fugitive, then he can be arrested right there and then. Uh, okay. Or when uh -oh. he appears, he has a gun tucked uh, in his waist, then mm -hmm. he can be arrested because yeah. that's in flagrante delito. Uh -oh. What if they say somebody told us that you killed this person? Can they uh, be? No. You but, cannot arrest? Yeah, because that's an accusation. Okay. And the investigator has no personal knowledge that that person actually committed the offense of uh, murder, for Is example. this clear in the law? That's very clear in the okay. law. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hold that thought, Senator Lagson. We're showing you live shots from the Supreme Court's flag-raising ceremony. As you can see, most court